clearly then the kind of justice the republic is talking about is a political one. Um, now, I think the most helpful examples is in book four, where um, Socrates is outlining in, in the city the rulers and the guardians aren't allowed to have private property because that puffs up your appetites and they need to suppress them. So Adiamantus, uh, Glaucon's brother, challenges Socrates. He says, Socrates, you are not making the guardians in our city very happy at all. The whole point of this was to lead to a good human life. And Socrates makes this ironic jab at him, Adiamantus, by saying that Socrates, you aren't making the guardians happy, is reverting back to an individualistic, um, individual-centered way of thinking about justice. Socrates' response to Adiamantus is the following. You aren't aiming to make any one group outstandingly happy, but to make the whole city so, as far as possible. We thought that we'd find justice most easily in such a city, and injustice, by contrast, in the one that is governed worst, and that by observing both cities, we'd be able to judge the question we've been inquiring into for so long. We take ourselves, then, to be fashioning the happy city, not picking out a few happy people and putting them in it, but making the whole happy. Suppose, then, that someone came up to us while we were painting a statue, and objected that, because we had painted the eyes, which are the most beautiful part, black rather than purple, we had not applied the most beautiful colors to the most beautiful parts of the statue. We'd think it reasonable to offer the following defense. You mustn't expect us to paint the eyes so beautifully that they no longer appear to be eyes at all. And the same with the other parts. Rather, we must look to see whether by dealing with each part appropriately, we are making the whole statue beautiful. Similarly, you mustn't force us to give our guardians the kind of happiness that would make them something other than guardians. We know how to clothe farmers in purple robes, festoon them with gold jewelry, and tell them to work the land whenever they please. We know how to settle our potters on couches by the fire, feasting and passing the wine around, with the wheel beside them whenever they wish to make a pot. And we can make all others happy in the same way, so that the whole city is happy. Don't urge us to do this, however, for if we do, a farmer wouldn't be a, fa a farmer, nor a potter a potter, nor none of the others would keep to the pattern of work which gives rise to a city. Um, a few lines later, Socrates says that such people would be happy as they would be at a festival rather than in a city, and we would be no longer talking about a city at all. This is a pretty damning piece of evidence against an analogical interpretation that is trying to tell us that the Republic isn't, isn't about a city, but is about you in isolation, you living a good life, and just do the rational thing all by yourself. Um, the whole point of the Republic is that that is not possible. Um, there, just as there is no beauty in the statue apart from the beauty of the whole, there is no happiness in a human life apart from the happiness of a community. And the same applies to justice. Now, as though all of this weren't evidence enough in the laws, which is an explicitly political dialogue, no one, no, no scholar who I know of has doubted that the laws is about politics, we find um, a number of similar um, political recommendations being made as the political re recommendation we made in the Republic. Um, uh, we find it say that uh, the, the correct form of music is not to provide pleasure, um, it's not acceptable, we won't allow um, you know, that mode of, a, a, a passionate, pleasure-inducing mode of music into our city. The same thing as in the Republic. Um, choral performances are imitations of characters in all sorts of ways, and they will not be allowed. The exact same recommendation is made in the Republic. It, it's a really big coincidence that the explicitly political dialogue matches the recommendations that are political in the Republic. It, or is it a coincidence? I guess uh, you can see which one of these two I'm trying to suggest. Now, now that I've essentially laid out um, what my claim is and how the parts and holes function, I do want to make some refinements to my claim. I want to put some limitations on the claim and not allow the claim to be carried too far. I'm not trying to say that what is written in books two to five of the Republic is what Plato wants us to go out and do. I don't think he's saying we need to go form a colony that will be based on the structure of the Republic. 
Plato is well aware that the ideal is not often the practical. I think Plato is telling us that the city in the Republic is the ideal city. And in the laws, he tells us how we could work that out insofar as possible in practice. Uh, a similar project is, is, is done in the Statesman. Um, so I think Plato would be aware that a lot of the things, a lot of the political recommendations specifically in the book are not practical. Glaucon and Adiamantus point that out to Socrates multiple, at multiple points in the middle of the argument. And Socrates generally shrugs them off and says, yes, yes, this is a city in speech. Just sit tight and listen to the, to the abstract argument. Um, so I want, I, you know, I want to distance myself from the other extreme interpretation. A another thing I want to distance myself from is um, a commitment to reason and spirit and appetite functioning in this way. I think the main point for Socrates is that reason be in command both in the city and in the soul. Socrates says in the Republic that the only specific political recommendation he is making that's truly important is that philosophers become kings or kings become philosophers. If that happens, the philosophers will be able to reason to all the same things philosoph uh, Socrates reasons to, and um, you know, they'll be able to come to all the same conclusions if they were the right one. So I think what's really important here is about what's going on at the top of the chain, not what's going on at the bottom. Um, but that's kind of an addendum to my main argument. Um, so in one sense, I am in agreement with Julia Annis and other proponents of the analogical interpretation that I agree that the nuts and bolts aren't what is primarily important. But I do agree that the abstract, or rather I would disagree with Julia Annis, that the abstract outline of the political recommendations um, are very central to the interpretation of the Republic and are what Socrates considers to be ideal. Um, this is uh, a really big problem for proponents of the analogical interpretation. If you go back to my historical sketch and think about why the analogical interpretation was brought up in the first place, um, it was because we had a way of looking at the Republic that wasn't taking it very seriously. We had Bertrand Russell and Karl Popper um, and Anthony <coughs> Kenny um, all really kind of casting dispersions on the book not really demonstrating a way that thought deeply about what Plato was challenging us um, and what, what he was challenging our society to be like. Now, the analogical interpretation is supposed to be a response to that, and it seems that this cure is far worse, or at least as bad as the disease. Um, this interpretation also completely ignores the things that Plato is trying to challenge our society on. Um, it ignores them by pretending they're not there, which is no better than ignoring them, um, you know, by casting one paragraph um, criticisms upon them. So I think that, um, in, in this sense, the analogical interpretation really has failed both in its arguments and in its core motivations. Um, as I said, the cure seems to have been worse than the disease. I am not saying that to take Plato seriously, you have to agree with everything he says in the Republic, but you definitely have to somehow come to terms with the fact that a man who lived in a democracy would not have known of John Stuart Mill, but who would have been familiar with a lot of arguments for democracy that are still used today, um, that he thought he knew that, he thought really hard about that, uh, tried to figure out what a just society really would be like, and came to the conclusion that uh, a somewhat totalitarian and um, uh, at, at the very least, aristocratic society would be better. Um, saying that is necessary to take Plato seriously. Not agreeing with it, but knowing that that's what he's saying. And then working it out and um, thinking about the implications of that um, it definitely, definitely um, needs to be part of any serious and complete study of the Republic. We can't get off easy um, by saying it's totalitarian, I don't want to think about it. We also can't get off easy by saying it's not political. Let's just think about the ethical claims. Um, so that's basically my talk. Um, I open it up to questions and answers at this point. Yeah. Um, going back to a point you made earlier about Sorry. Um, certain certain political claims Plato makes being hard to translate into ethical claims. Absolutely. Like, for example, the second discourse one. Mm -hmm. Um, my medieval history is a little off, so 
At around the time that players thought that players' reports were in the process of being lost and refound, there was a 